you can only work hard if you know what you're working towards. From Kona Juden de Pierre, you may not see this was see. I'm Velison Rango Melis was CJ, formerly known as Rosie Matonzel, bringing you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture, but also formalize a street hustle. On today's episode, we have the lady, Tom Fats Madu. Kona Juden de Pierre, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Today, we have an international designer, muralist, uh, illustrator. You've done almost everything, actually, in the shortest span of time. Yeah. You are only turning 23 this year? 24? Don't tell people. Okay, my bad. I apologize. (laughs) But you're under 25. I am under 25. 25. I don't tell people my age because I feel like a lot of people want to place you somewhere because of your age. So if I tell you I'm like only 18, you are, you're already thinking I'm you an emerging an artist. I'm not. I've done, I'm not 18, by the way. But I'm not an emerging artist. <laughs> and camera. I'm not. Like, I'm really not. But because a lot of people know I'm young, mm. more than most artists that are doing what I'm doing, At the they scale. box me. or So I, I can't even think bigger than what I want to because you already box me into my age. So that's the <laughs> only reason I try not to tell people my age. Damn. We start the podcast. I'm Cindy Swissing with Listen on Special Edition. Thank God for the savings. Him. We yen. Uh today I was doing a lot of research. Not today, doing research on you, right? After we agreed on the part. It came up to me that there's something very important to you as an artist, as an illustrator, as a creative, as an entrepreneur, because you make money doing this. The one thing that you always highlight in everything that you've done is representation. Can you please explain it? Um, How do you feel about representation yeah. of black women, more specifically? Yeah, I think black people, like, over, it's, it's mainly black people, but we have a lot of men doing that for men. So I don't think that's my purpose right now. So Shout I tried out to, the to men. Yeah, it's amazing. It's great. We need that. But I've decided to make it for women because I am a woman. I understand. I understand how the society is built towards women. I understand how my mom experience life how my little baby sister is experiencing it and I also know how I grew up into a space like this where art I don't see a lot of art that show faces that look like me and if it is a black woman it's certainly not someone that looks like me it's not someone who's happy it's not someone who is finding beauty in simple things and that's me it's usually a black woman that's upset that's struggling that's that's just how mm. that's the stigma we have towards black women it's switch so, sides to this yeah which is true but it's not that's not the only narrative there's so much beauty in the struggle as well and i think i want to be the voice that represents that side mm. like i want to represent a woman who Sorry. (laughs) I want to be able to represent someone who is shy or... Like, there's so many different characters of black women and it's upsetting that only one is highlighted and that one doesn't apply to a lot of us. So I think that's what my work tries to do. I try to represent every single one of us. Like, I want you to be able to see something and say, that's me. And I didn't think someone saw me like that. It's very simple. I don't have a story. I, for one, don't have a story about struggle or I create art for creating art. So I want someone to see me for my simple life. So that's... that's, We were talking about this, right? We were like, what is the experience of an artist who creates from a point of creating? Like, what's that experience been for you? Because it's not a financial circumstance. It's purely for expression and expression at the time you wanted to express yourself. Yeah. How's that? How do you navigate it? Um, What's the incentive when there's no monetary need for it? It's very beautiful. Like, I don't, my art doesn't feed me. Well, now it does, but it, it, that was never part of the plan. It was so never survival. I was, yeah, it was never part. Like, I went to school and I studied what I had to study because I knew that's what's going to bring bread to the table. But my art was never part of that plan. So I created work from a place of wanting to create, and I created work not because I'm in, not because I want to spread the word about. I don't know. There was just never pressure towards my work. It was literally just to create, and I think there's so much beauty in that because I'm able to explore so much more outside of just painting, or and I'm not tied to that, to that 
idea of a black female artist or do you know do you know what I yeah. mean? Exactly. So yeah, it's Is it's it profitable freeing. though being against the status quo? Is it profitable? Yeah. The way I create my work. Yeah, because you're is. saying there is this genre that has been carved out, and then how feasible is it? How do you sell it? <laughs> I'm about to say something that I don't usually admit, but I am a new age artist. I am a product of the internet and social media, and I own that. So a lot of my work sells and is profitable because I show a lot of who I am. There's so much, it's, it's deeper than me being an artist. Like, I am who I am. Like, I love coffee, I love this. So a lot of people are able to relate to me as a person, and that makes it easier for you to connect with my work. And it's funny how a lot of people are able to connect with my work and buy a lot of pieces, simply because I'm showing you guys my life. And it's not fancy, it's not extraordinary, it's not that different. But I'm inviting you to my space so you're able to understand my work better and mm. you're able to want to have this in your home. Where did you find the creative wisdom? People know they're good at it, but the wisdom to know that I just got to be me. Okay. Um, so I'm from the East Strand, firstly. So I'm not exposed to a lot of things creatively, like the whole creative culture. I don't think I was ever really exposed to it. But it's because I grew up in a household of black women. My mom preaches knowing yourself and doing stuff for yourself so much. And then I have this granny who is very also like, I grew up around women who know themselves and know what they want and go for it. So that's just always been me, I think. Mm. From a very young age, I've known that I don't like partying. It's not going to be part of... I do go to parties now because I'm told I need to network, which is also something that I'm currently looking into that I actually don't have to. That's not me. It's horrible. I'm not going to do it. But my point is, growing up, I think my foundation to the person I am plays a really huge role in how I put, how I put out my odds or the work I do, like I don't have to try to be someone else. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've, I know who I am and what I can be. And I'm very grounded and happy with that. You're creating work at a global scale, right? But you're continuously creating. I'm struggling with it. I know a lot of people struggle with it because the only thing we're ever thinking of is what's the next move. How do you take time to celebrate yourself for those milestones you keep reaching? Mm -hmm. I think my form of celebrating myself is to create more. So I know it sounds like a bit weird, but for example, right now, I'm creating more because I'm trying to get the specific camera lens, right? Yeah. Just so I can create better content. So this is me wanting to do more so I can get to a point where I can get that. And that's only going to push me to create more for the next thing. So it's just, I think I'm really passionate about my craft. You're and I want to do more. I know that I want to be, I want to like, I want to create for right now I'm in classes to create sculptures for example because I really love it I don't know if that's who I'm going to be but I love being able to do that that means I have to create more work to make money to pay for the, those classes to buy the equipment materials and better myself and my craft and try it out I might hate it I might not but I can do it and I saw what it does for me and yeah I don't know I think I'm celebrating yeah. the hard work by doing what I want to do you literally school of Tom Sachs. He always says the reward for good work is more work. Yeah. And when you're doing work, because you're a purist, you're creating from this beautiful place and you're creating for the sake of creating. When you're doing brand partnerships, how does that feel when you're running back and forth with the creative director about your heart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very weird relationship and topic for me because I don't work a nine to five for a reason. I, I can't, I can, because I don't want to be like, I don't want to shut out any brand collaborations that were meant to come my way. I can, if I decide that I'm going to work with this, it's because I understand it and I know that their voice aligns with mine. Mm -hmm. But I have been in a lot of situations where 
I don't know what I'm doing. I know I'm following a brief, but it doesn't, at this point, you just chose me because I was probably one of the black females you were told to have to work with. Like, I've been, do, do you get what I mean? Like, I've been in situations where I, I don't know if you really connected with my work. Do you what even you know what I do? Exactly. Do you even, did you actually go into seeing the work I do? Like, the last time, the last yeah. correspondence with a brand was them wanting me to create a pattern. I'm like, I literally just create portraits. How did, Not a repeat exactly, pattern. How did you think I was the person for this? And then you start to understand that maybe they just wanted a black artist or, I don't know, it's, it's very weird. But brands are very tricky for me. I've become very picky because it's, it's nicer to know that someone wants to work with you because they want to work with you. They want your voice in this campaign. It's triggering. Creative affirmation. How do you get it? I have I have a lot of creative friends. Firstly, not in my space. I'm very intentional about that. Of course. I don't I don't have artist <laughs> friends <laughs> for for various reasons. But I don't have artist friends. I have friends that are musicians. This that who are constantly telling me how great I am. I don't need them to tell me, but it's affirming for people who have achieved what they have or who have worked with other artists to be able to say, I like what you're doing and you're doing it so well and you're still keep keeping to being yourself. Mm. So that, that tells me I'm doing something right. I'm not where I want to be. I don't know where that is, but I know I'm on, I'm on the right track because mm. it hasn't taken from me. And yeah, it hasn't taken, like I'm enjoying every little part of it. The rejection, the, yeah, wanting to apply for something and realizing I don't have a portfolio. I need to go learn how to put this together. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's a whole process. It's like... There's nothing as embarrassing as meeting everything except the portfolio. Because exactly. you're sitting there like, yo... Uh, I'm nice with it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm here. You know, you're like, I don't, yo. Exactly. And then they're like, there's these guidelines that are created as barriers. And there's always these problems we have as creators, right? But I'm on a new year, new me energy. So I want to use this platform for us to like, what's like the five things, if you can think of, that you wish that low could slow down on that as creatives ourselves we know agencies want this we know they want to brief but what's a healthier way to go around being a creative successfully mm. and success being the monetary yeah, value yeah. that everyone sees yeah because for me success is like recording a beautiful podcast but in the reality of things success is the numbers the metrics how many people listen how many people engaged um don't follow the blueprint that everyone tells you you should. Firstly, like I think when I entered this space, and by this space I mean the Joburg creative, whatever, is you come across people telling you that you should work with this, I can't wait till that person sees you, and and and. And I'm like, okay, so that's meant to show that I'm successful, but that was never part of my plan. That was never mm. what I had in mind for myself. So, firstly, it's Know yourself, know what you want for your craft and be passionate about it. Like, I know I don't want a lot of things that a lot of people haven't planned for me or have in mind for me. No, that's not my, that's not my plan. So stick with that. Know who you are, know what you want. And a lot of things will come your way and it will be easier to navigate through them. It will be easier to know that I'm saying no to this brand. It's a big brand. It could do so much for me, but it's not mine. Mm. That other black artist could could do great works for it. Cause yeah. And be able to like share other people's works, even if it's taken from you. Know when it's not yours. And I feel like my voice sounds like I'm about to cry. That's Ever. because yeah. yeah I, uh, cause it's like, I hate it. So I, I feel so passionately for a lot of things. And now I'm like, I'm reliving exactly when I felt so uncomfortable about someone saying something about my work or who I should be. And I'm like, no, don't do that to me. But anyway, five things, know yourself, know what you want, work hard, but 
you can only work hard if you know what you're working towards. So Jeez. it's you know weird. What they say in Zulu. Mm-hmm. Hmm? What does that mean? <laughs> the idea will build, will make, will create the resources. Okay. Essentially. Yeah. 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 So yeah, work hard, but for something that is yours. And be passionate. Like, I, I want to preach passion. Don't do anything that does not feel like it's yours. Like, you should be able to feel, even when you're angry about something, it's annoying to be upset at something that never even mattered to you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I want to be angry at things that were meant to be in my journey. Like, stress. Everything must just happen passionately and belong where it's supposed to belong. Number five, I don't know if I have number five. Number five is, oh, um, I'm trying to find a nice way to say this, but there's a whole ego thing happening around creatives. <laughs> that is so weird because it projects, like you see it, you see it being projected into the work they do, into the, car, the, the way they relate to other people. So don't, yeah, don't allow yourself to be small. Because you probably are still very small to a lot of people. Cabello Fair Packer always says, there's a school of yay. Those are the creatives you're talking about. Where it's like everything has to be aggressive. There's just like no moment of actually understanding that this world is for us and not by you for you. I like that. So when I sat back and because I take a hiatus, that's why we record in bulk. When I sat back, I was like, what actually is creative worth to every creative? And that's the question I've been wanting to ask this season. What, like, what What's your feels, creative worth? Yeah. What's that thing that says, yo, what makes you worthy as a creative yeah. to yourself? Mm, experience. I've, I know I said I'm not an emerging artist, but I am starting off and I am aware that I can't expect to sell my art for 100K maybe as amazing as someone who is but i don't have the experience i don't have the understanding of the structure so i think experience does a lot to your worth i know i am i know my work is worthy to be seen in a certain sorry and i'm not meant to do this <laughs> i know my work is valuable and i know my value but i know that there's there's time for you to think you've made it or for you to think you're the shit <laughs> so um yeah experience okay. take, take yeah go through every stage like you come all the way from the east end do you think spaces like corner you did we still need actual landmarks considering there's the internet we are digital kids mm -hmm. we are as a result of what happened in these corners mm -hmm. um i am from the east end i don't know much about the culture here but I am surrounded by people who are a product of from Fentine. So we definitely do, not because not because of what happens in these streets, but because of what the people from these streets take out to the world. A lot of people hung out here or created whatever they created for themselves to fuel me and teach me about the, the way things work. Like a lot of my closest friends are from here and I've learned so much about who I should speak to because they've networked networked is yeah. that word <laughs> they've networked around here and have made connections and that has worked to my benefit because of them being this here. hustle or this exactly so yeah you definitely do just to spread the culture in lesser or not lesser but communities that are necessarily cultured creatively yeah when you're creating your work, when you're creating for stores in America, what's the setup like? Like we, we talk about business and how successful people have become and the journeys they've taken, but like the formality of it, the, the text, the back end, how have you managed that as a young creative? Mm, I've often like looked at how I communicate with brands or clients locally compared to internationally. And it's very different because the international clients treat me as, I don't know, I think they see my story and feel it more. So they see me as who I'm trying to put myself out to be. Whereas locally, it's, it's always like, I don't know, I have a very weird relationship with how 
South Africa has treated my work. Like, I'm not angry about it, but it's very weird. It's, I'm still trying to navigate how to put my work out for South Africa the local. Consumer. Yeah, but internationally, it's, it's always like emails, obviously. And then we get on a call and they want to know me. They want to know that they're putting my work in this space because it means this and that to me and this is and I'm sure like I feel like me telling my stories about how I grew up go Dave Tong for example and this is how the situation was or whatever it's not a bad situation but this is how the culture is is more valuable and more touching to them than it would be to you because you also grew up in a similar situation so yeah I um what was the question <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think I'm trying to say um, the dynamic of the whole thing is it's more honest. It's more, they appreciate it more. Mm. And I'm not taking away from whoever appreciates my work here. But I know how deep it is felt to someone there because it's a new story. It's one that they want to connect with because they don't have the privilege to live with it. And I say privilege because it's beautiful stories that I tell. Um, they don't have the privilege to live in these situations or to experience a post-apartheid society or whatever. It's not pretty, but I, I think I, I, I show the beauty of it. Exactly. It's a good game drive. Yeah. And we here, I feel like here it's too personal. It's too personal for me to ask you to see the beauty of it. Meanwhile, we're sitting in load shedding. And you know what I mean? It's just... It's, oh, it it right might side. be yeah, it might be too much for me to ask you to see the beauty of our struggle because it's just too close to home. Yeah. Some of our beautiful conversation. Yeah. What's your word to the youth? The word to my peers, because I am the youth as well, is to be true to yourself. Surround yourself with passionate people. Be intentional in everything that you do and allow yourself to be small and learn. Like, you never make it. Like, I'm very far to where I'd like to be. I don't know, like I said, I don't know where that is, but I know I'm still very small and I'm accepting that. I'm, accept I'm, I'm allowed to call for help. And yeah, I, it doesn't matter what you think of that. It's, it's working towards what I haven't planned for myself. Stay in what you haven't planned for yourself. Don't let everyone tell you who you should be or who do you know what I mean mm. yeah or else there's just valela a lot of channels and a lot of help because you think you've made it or you think you're big or you're not to a lot of people but you are to the small community you could be bigger allow yourself to feel small yeah Kornaju Dendebier thank God for the savings this was beautiful it really was timely and evidently needed Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>